Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back. Unless this is your first time, um, welcome to Effed Up True Crime. Um, so if you're new to us, make sure you head over to the social media pages of Effed Up True Crime. E double F E D Up True Crime. Um, cause it's a, so your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, all those sorts of social media sites, because we do put up things related to cases on those pages. Sometimes they make it to the podcast. Sometimes they don't, um, updates. If there are ever any updates, we will be updating, um, it onto the pages. So just to keep up with everything that goes on in this wacky world. Um, uh, yeah, and so just, yeah, this week or today, I think I'll be doing tomorrow. So today, not this week, um, I want to let you know that this is actually a pedophile case and, um, that there could be triggers. Uh, so please, please put your mental health first. If you don't think that you can sit and listen to this, we won't be offended. I want your mental health to be put first over views and clicks and likes and all the rest of it because I, I never used to believe in trigger warnings when I was younger because I've been through, you know, the molestation rape and all of that and I, it's never been a trigger for me personally. I think I dealt with it pretty well even though I was young. Um, I have the attitude of I have to move, you know, not a lot of people have this. I am fortunate. I am very fortunate that my, um, that the way I can cope with things is to dig deeper into these cases. For me, sometimes it can bring back memories, but I don't want to say I've learned to embrace because you can never embrace something like that. But I want to, I want to save other people if I possibly can, or give them voices um, for any for these heinous things that are done to them. Um, so please switch off um, because, as I said, your mental health is so much more important to me than anything else. Because I know in the beginning, I mean, I was only about 10, but for, for a good 10 years, this really messed with me. Um, up until I had my own children, I was an absolute wreck. I was a mess. And looking back now, I understand why I drank so much. I understand why I abused painkillers and all the rest of it. It all comes along with this. I thought I dealt with it back then, but I hadn't. Um, so but a psychologist was just brilliant and has helped me get get past it without having to look back but as i said i'm fortunate and this doesn't happen for a lot of people um i refuse to let it rule my life but without antidepressants it does and it, it would um so if if you prefer not to go like an antidepressant route or even if you do that I understand 100% how this can take over your life forever um so please 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 put yourself first and we'll be back with other stuff other subjects if you will um but I think it's always important uh, important to make sure that the people know about these cases I'll never understand pedophiles and live streaming what they do I'll never understand why they do what they do which we will cover next week because um, I, I came across this documentary which intrigued me um, there are a bunch called the virtuous pedophiles I think it was called virtuous pedophiles or predators and they are pedophiles that have come out saying that they're pedophiles and that they're attracted to younger children, um, but don't act on it. I'm, I'm glad that they don't act on it, but 
it's it's a tough one it's a tough one to watch to listen to to understand i'll never understand it um fully um but i i do want to touch on that topic probably next week we've got a few other things planned between now and then um so yeah well i found it fascinating I mean, there wasn't a lot that we could find on it because, of course, a lot of these accounts are locked down um, because when they have come out admitting all of these things, they are abused, well, you know, which I can understand 100%, um, but a lot aren't willing to talk about it. Um, so there, there's sites that they all join to, you know, help each other and everything are, are locked down. Um, there is a lengthy process to be involved in this. And honestly, I wasn't going, I, I'm the sort of person that will usually, if you, like, so if you go to my Facebook or to my Instagram and you see me following something that's heinous, like, you know, uh, what was it, the Chauvin, the George Floyd. I I went into that group, Save Chauvin or whatever his name is, Save Him. And, of course, I only went there just to see what the mentality is on the side of people wanting to save him. I mean, Derek, Derek, I think that's it. Um, so if you do, please don't ever think... If you do ever see me in any of these kinds of groups under under this name or any other you know pen name which i've retired my other pen name now so we're not in the fiction world anymore but if you do please know that i am not there to defend these people i'm not there to defend anything their actions the other people that are going to bat for them i am there simply for the psychology of it all just to try and understand and i ask questions i don't sit there in a and you know say nothing and go through it all because the majority of the time they don't throw you out for saying stuff um because they're never really policed well so whoever sets up these accounts uh usually yeah they don't really well you can understand what type of what type of person would set up an account for that but so I don't know, yeah, so it's not policed well. So I just go in there and ask questions like, why would you do this? Why would you defend this person? Um, so that I've got more content to show the world that there are honest to goodness idiots out there. Honestly. All right, so let's get to today's. Now, some of these names, difficult. So I have ossified them, if you will. <laughs> Made it. I've gone through these, some of these names, just to try and try and pronounce them properly. But sometimes I just can't. I am an Aussie. You can hear that Aussie accent. I have what they call the Bogan accent, um, which some people I don't really agree with it. But some people have said that you know, basically, a, a Bogan is the redneck of Australia. Um, where I don't care um, with a lot of things, but you know, <laughs> the yeah, that, it's the only way I can describe it. Really, people have said that bogans are like rednecks. So, but but most of us are not inbred. I am. Oh my god, we will get to that. I am. I found out. Um, my great grandparents, brother and sister. I'll get into that one. Not today, but I will. It was fascinating. Now, so this is actually, I can't believe I didn't hear about this earlier. I have really dropped the ball on this one um, because usually I will hear about the heinous crimes that go on because of the stupid things I search. Now, this guy is absolutely disgusting. Victor Lifshevsky who was 37 at the time of arrest and he was formerly a pastor at a church at a local church from where they are i think it's russia I'm pretty sure it was i am so bad today right um 
and he was arrested for sexually assaulting many foster children who were under his and his wife's care. Now, the Daily Star reported Victor carried out sickening sex attacks on victims aged 13 or under in the care, in his care, and treated them as his personal harem. When police arrested Victor in June of 2017, after one of the foster girls complained to a teacher, um, he was taken in and I'm pretty sure he was kept in. Now, in this case, which it hasn't gone anywhere, not the case itself, but what we're about to discuss, social services were actually accused of negligence, um, as they are in many, many cases that we have seen um, where they have completely dropped the ball. So social services accused of negligence when it came to this case in this case and many others in recent times. So, and I mean, as a comparison, because that case didn't go anywhere, if you saw the Gabriel Fernandez documentary on Netflix, which was absolutely heartbreaking to say the least, um, 